Welcome to the live Bible study hosted by Andrew Womack Ministries and Karis Bible College. Tonight, you'll learn truths from the Word with believers around the globe. Submit any questions you have in the comments and share this broadcast tonight with your friends. Hello and welcome to our Tuesday night live Bible study. I'm here with Carrie Pickett Hello. and we are really going to have a great, great time Amen. tonight. Man, it's been quite an experience the last few weeks being <laughs> quarantined. But you know, let me just give an update before we get into the Bible study and, and Carrie's going to be sharing with you about how you can get involved and send us questions. But, you know, again, we've got such a great staff. Mike and Carrie are a big part of it, Andrew Wirtz and other people. But they saw these problems coming. They have dealt with it. We uh, only had two days where we were only able to take about a thousand calls a day. And we sent all of the customer service calls where people wanted product to the website. But we answered uh, 2,000 prayer calls during those two days that we're in transition. But yeah. by Monday, uh, we were back to 100%. We have 140 plus people answering the phones yeah. at home. And last week, I did an interrupt on my television program and offered the Believer's Authority book uh, free of charge. And I think we had 12,000 calls in two days and we were able to handle uh, 10,000 of them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we had to call the others back. But we, we did all of that from home. And right now we yep. have 600 plus employees and we are still paying all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, they're still on salary. I just visited with a minister friend of mine who has 611 employees that he just laid off mm -hmm. and let them all go. And uh, of course, I didn't tell him our side of the story, but I just got off the phone and started praising God because God has prepared us. And despite all of the things that are happening, yep. we're still able to do it. We aren't taking any money from the government. For one thing, you, we can't do it, but I'd already made the decision not to do it before the government offered it. But uh, if you're over 500 employees, you can't take advantage of those loans. And God's taking care of us. And mm -hmm. you told us during our meeting today that it's the same all around the world. Yep. We got what, 16 offices? Yeah, we have 16 Andrew Womack Ministry offices located in 20 different nations, also the schools um, that are there. And yeah, everyone is, their partners are supporting them. Um, they're still able to minister to people. They're calling the partners every day. Yeah, that's and so that's really awesome. And then none of our staff or students internationally has gotten sick. They're being able to minister to that's people. That's a so praise the Lord. It's just, it's really awesome. So It's a testimony to the Word of God because I haven't personally been praying for them or it's not me that somehow or another my faith is affecting me. It's the Word of, God, the Word of God that they have learned. They're putting it to practice and yep. not a single staff or director has gotten sick. Yep. So, and then they're just ministering to their students and the students, the students are ministering to people. We've heard, even heard from Colorado here, just students that are ministering as they're making phone calls, you know, to Comcast to, you know, change their bill and they're leading people to the Lord. Just So what was that testimony you gave? So yeah, we had a, a student, um, I believe a second year student, he was calling uh, Comcast just to say, hey, could I do something with my bill? Could I delay it? You know, just trying to look at bills and stuff like that. And the person he was talking to, a young man just said, I feel like I can share everything thing with you. And so just opened up and talked for two hours to our student. And by the end, uh, the student had led him to the Lord. Uh, he prayed for him, you know, just some really great stuff. He may so, be without a job if they monitored the call. <laughs> I know you said, I hope I didn't get him in trouble, but he got saved. So he's going to heaven now. That's so. right. It's worth it. <laughs> it's worth it. So, so anyway, just, we're going to have a great time in Bible study, but you, we want you to participate with us. And so Carrie will give you the information about how you can join in. And be yeah. A part of this. So welcome everybody. I know we have a lot of of new visitors. So welcome. We're so excited that you're a part of this every Monday and Tuesday night. We do live, uh, live streams. And so we ask you to join us. You're going to be super blessed. Let friends and family know. And let me interject that last night we had James <laughs> Robinson on our Truth and Liberty broadcast. Yes. And I tell you what, it was awesome. That guy was fired up. Yeah. And uh, so if you missed that, you can go look on our website, truthandliberty.net. 
and you can see that it'll be archived and it was really good. Yeah, we've had a lot of our, even the Tuesday night Bible studies as well. We've been talking a lot about the coronavirus and fear and faith. And so these would be excellent things that you could also refer your friends and family to because they're all archived there on awmi.net. And so you'll be really blessed. But for those of you joining us, this is an opportunity for you to interact. So whatever forum that you're watching on, just go down to your chat section and you can send us questions. And we're gonna try to get through as many questions as we can tonight. Andrew's going to be ministering on health versus healing, so it's going to be powerful. Also, when you do that, um, interact with us, you can, there's another way, and that is that you can get the Bible study notes. So everything that Andrew is sharing, we, get, we send those out in notes. And so if you have not signed up for that, we want we encourage you to do that. We want to be able to minister to you throughout the week. So go to awmi.net slash Bible study, and what you'll do is you'll register, and we'll start sending you these notes so you can go through the scriptures. Andrew usually always has pages and pages and pages of things he does doesn't even get to or other resources. So this would be a tremendous blessing. And when you do that, we also enter you into a drawing. And so every week we have a drawing. And this week it is the book, Self-Centeredness, The Source of All Grace. One of my least requested teachings, <laughs> but, but it's we, really one of the best. But the gift that keeps on giving. So uh, <laughs> I always say this is the best leadership book you've ever read. So it's, why does that gift keep on giving? Because you just keep giving it to other people. That's what I was thinking because like, I, I, this isn't for me. This, this must is, be for oh, Carrie. This is, this is for Joe. And so uh, this is the, we always say this is the best marriage book that Andrew's ever written. It's the best leadership book Andrew's ever written just because it deals with you. And so I encourage you that this, while you're stuck at home, uh, this is a good time to deal with you. And Do so, you know, one of the things I learned during this quarantine, I was studying and found out that the Hebrew word for, um, I guess what it is. I No, you're like me. Oh no. It's ego. Oh that's that gives good. a whole new meaning to yes, that egocentric and stuff. It's all about it's I. all about me, Jesus. That's it. <laughs> I just learned so that. this is a great book. And if you're saying, hey, I'm not sure if I could win it, but I definitely want it, then I would encourage you to go to our website, awmi.net, and order this book. This would be a great book uh, for you first and then for anyone else that might need it. So you have the opportunity to win that. And last week we had um, lessons from David, how to be a giant killer. And Emery Wilson, you won that. So Emery gonna get that out to you. And then we we kind of have some things still in the works here. We encourage you to check us out, awmi.net slash events. Um, we're going to uh, have Campus Day. It's going to be May 14th through the 15th. It's going to be really special because we're going to incorporate it with our graduation of our students. So that's that's on track for now. And so that would be a great time to come and check out Karis. If you've, if you've been interested, even if you're not interested, this is a good opportunity to come check it out because God is doing some amazing things with the students. We're still having school still doing live stream Zoom meetings. Students are getting blessed. And so Truth and Liberty Coalition also is planned for June 5th through June 6th. This is going to be a really powerful time just as far as how you can get involved in changing the nation. And we did go ahead and today made a decision to cancel in God, um, God, with, us. God with Us, which is our musical schedule for May the 8th and the 9th. And I really believe that we probably will be able to meet by then, but I suspect that they're going to still have all of these cautions in place and probably still discourage it. And we have to have a large attendance to make these big performances pay for themselves. Yeah. We've been actually losing money on them, uh, hadn't totally broken even. And so we made a decision to do that. Our conference uh, on Don't Limit God with Jesse Duplantis is mm -hmm. April the 30th and May the 1st, and I am gonna have that, whether it is here or whether we live stream it, I'm not sure, but we're gonna go ahead and do that. Yeah. I'm looking forward It'll to it. It'll still be powerful, but stay tuned on awmi.net. You're gonna see some information. If you're not able to come to the God With Us production, which is too bad, we also have the DVD in it. The DVD is powerful, so we're gonna be offering some specials on that so that you can still get that. My kids sing that all the time at yeah, home. I remember you talking It about is that. just powerful, and uh, so God With Us, the heart of Christmas, the heart of Christmas, man, they've been singing, you know, I found my king uh, all around the house and, and especially even our Esther production that we haven't yet recorded, but just uh, trust him in the middle of the storm. The kids have been singing it loud and the just playing. The Esther production, she was a star. <laughs> she was doing this stupid dance or silly dance. I don't know what It was the, stupid. <laughs> but it, she stole the show. Thank Carrie you. was quite the actor. Yes, thank and you. And let me say that this coming Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, 
I contacted the Murins, who are the ones that put on all of these musicals, and just asked, you know, could we use some of the stuff that they had already recorded? Well, Elizabeth, if you knew her, she's so yeah. creative. They're out recording and videoing tonight. Right now. And they are going to have two different uh, videos, I think about, what, 20, 30 minutes? Or? Yeah, so we're going to have about, so the whole show will be about 45 minutes. You'll be ministering and teaching on the resurrection and then cutting away to some video that's going to be super powerful. So they're they are recording so it. So they are recording speak. it as we speak. It's going to be special, all brand new. Yeah, and just that's for gonna, you. It's going to be Resurrection Sunday, uh, and it'll be a blessing. I think it's at 3 p.m. Mountain 3, time. 3 p.m. on Sunday. That would be amazing. I know last Sunday, if you weren't able to join us, Andrew and Jamie did a live stream communion, and that was powerful. We had kind of sat down even with our kids, talked about communion again with them. We took communion together as a family and prayed. It was really, really powerful. So I would encourage you, that's that's a great thing to go back and look at on the archives as well. If you go to uh, Andrew's site and it says under special videos or special featured videos, go under that. You'll see all of our live stream events. And so that'll be a blessing to people. So did you tell them how to ask questions? Yes. Yeah, so go down to the forum, whatever forum you're watching on, go down to the chat section and send us your questions. Try to keep them on topic and we'll be able to get to as many as possible. Okay. What I want to talk about tonight is health versus healing. And some people may not even know a difference between that. But what I'm talking about is that many Christians, I'm talking specifically here to Christians who believe that God can heal. Many Christians believe God can heal, but they, they wait until they're infected, until they're sick, and then they start seeking for healing. Mm -hmm. And that's better than not seeking for healing at all. But I think there's something even better than that. And that is walking in divine health to where, you know, this is kind of a, I guess, a Star Trek or science fiction kind of way of saying it. But it's like you have a force field around you and no sickness can penetrate that mm -hmm. and get to you. And some of you may think that that's just impossible. You know, I did a recording just a few minutes ago with God TV, and this was one of the questions that they asked as I was talking about Psalms 91, that no plague will come nigh your dwelling. And they brought up the question, not because they were antagonistic, they were just new people were thinking this, and they said, well, what about the people who are Christians and they love God and yet they're sick, even Christian leaders and stuff. And I said, well, I'm not condemning anybody, but I can guarantee you God has provided healing. And if we get sick, it's not God who failed. It's me that failed. God gives grace to the humble. And if you will humble yourself and say, God, you're faithful, your word is true. And if it's not working in my life, it's not you that's a problem. It's me that somehow or another hasn't learned how to receive. So anyway, what I want to share is that it's one thing to... Pray and believe God for healing when you're sick, but it's even better to believe God not to get sick, mm -hmm. to walk in divine health. And I know that this is a new wrinkle in some people's brains. Mm -hmm. You've never even thought of this. Uh, there's some people I'm sure watching this that it has never crossed your mind that you could actually live without being sick because we've just been taught that that's the way it is. Yeah. I imagine you probably brought up that you just got sick every once in a while, and that's the way it was. Yeah, you just dealt with it. I know one of the big teachings that changed my life when I came to Bible school was blessings versus miracles yeah. versus constantly believing for a miracle, knowing that God was able and God loved me, and boy, I had faith for a miracle. I was like, man, it's better to have faith to walk in a continual blessing Amen. and that's not awesome. have to need a miracle. That changed my life when I came to Bible school. It really did. That's awesome. I think I mentioned this last week when I was teaching on Psalms 91, but let me just go back and start with this verse again from Exodus chapter 23. And in verse 25, it says, And you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless thy bread and thy water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. That is a radical statement, that I will take sickness away. This isn't talking about some individual sickness. This is a statement that all sickness, all sickness will be taken away. And I think I mentioned this last week, but when it says, I will take, or, or excuse me, let me just read this. It says, um, I will take sickness away. The words take and the words away on both sides of sickness, it's the exact same word. Mm -hmm. And it's pronounced sur 
Um, and it's a Hebrew word, and it means to turn off. And, you know, uh, Caroline Leaf has made a lot of things popular talking about the brain. She's a brain surgeon and uh, yet a believer at the same time. And she, she talks about how that your mind literally controls every cell in your body. And if you're depressed, if you're discouraged, if you're fearful, mm -hmm. that it's like you have these locks on each individual cells. And, you know, all cancer is, everybody has radical cells in their body, but some people those radical cells, they just don't affect them. Other people are susceptible to this. Yeah. And she was saying that, you know, your brain literally sends out these signals that allow this sickness to come into your cells mm -hmm. and to infect you. And so that's what I picture when it says he will turn off all sickness. I believe that he just locks those cells, makes them so that they are immune to all yeah, of this stuff. Awesome. I do not believe that you have to live with sickness. You don't have to live with allergies. You know, I was just talking to Mark, one of our guys out here that runs uh, some of this, these cameras and stuff, yeah. and he was born with a genetic disease, and when he came to Bible college, he just made a decision. I don't have to live this way, and he decided not to do it Amen. and totally healed. It's awesome. Amen. So let me share another passage that goes right along with this. This is out of the book of Deuteronomy, and this is Moses speaking to the Israelites right before he went up into the mountain and he died and then the children of Israel went into uh, Israel uh, under Joshua. And the whole book of Deuteronomy is written by Moses speaking to the people just the day before he went up into this mountain. So it's really one discourse and it's, he's just recounting all of the things that happened. So he, in the seventh chapter, he's telling them to remember what God did, the mighty acts that he used to bring them out of the land of Egypt, etc. And let me just jump in here in verse 13. It says, And he will love thee, talking about God, will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn, thy wine, thine oil, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep in the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. And just as Carrie was saying, I hadn't got time to teach on this, but there's a difference between a miracle where you wait until a problem hits and then you pray and God gives you a miracle, which is a superseding yeah. or a suspension of natural laws. That's one way to receive from God, but you can receive a blessing which will prevent problems. Yeah. So this isn't talking about just being healed. Mm -hmm. This is talking about being healthy so that you don't even have sickness come yeah. out of your dwelling. So again, back in verse 14, Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be male or female barren among you or among your cattle. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. Think of what this is saying. This is, this is phenomenal. The Lord will take away from thee all sickness. And mm. again, if you meditate on this, he isn't saying that I'll wait until you get sick and then you will get healed of everything. Anything that comes against you, you'll be healed. This is saying that he will take away all sickness. Or if you compare this with Exodus 23, 25, he will turn off yeah. sickness in the midst of you. You won't even have the uh, ability to get sick. Amen. Amen. That's awesome. I know some people think you're crazy. Well, that's the reason that I don't get sick. Yeah. In 50 something years, I've been sick twice and it was really not sickness as much as it was. I just wore myself out and uh, depleted myself. One time I ministered 40 times in one week and the next week I ministered 41 times. That's 81 times in about 10 days and I was so tired and weak. I crawled into bed and laid there for 24 hours. And then when I got up, I felt pretty good. So I went out and split a cord of wood by hand and I just got a sinus infection, got a cold and a headache. And then the second time I came back from England and I had been 36 hours without sleep. And when I got home, my pond, the drain on my pond was stopped up and it was winter. So I had to break the ice and get down in the water to try and unplug this drain <laughs> in the middle of winter without 36 hours without sleep and I got a cold. Yeah. 
and that's all I've dealt with mm -hmm. in 50 years. I don't believe in being sick, and I don't look at those two things as being sickness as much as it is stupidity. <laughs> I was going to say stupid, but I, I wasn't going to say it. You no, said it. No, it, well, it was stupid. <laughs> I really lean hard on that verse that says the Lord preserves the simple. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but anyway, the Lord will take away from thee all sickness and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt upon which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. If you were to pair this with Deuteronomy chapter 28, which was spoken this same day, I'm not going to take time to turn over and read it, but it says that you will not have any sickness or disease in the first 15 verses. And then mm -hmm. in the uh, verses 15 through 68, it, it's under the law, and of course we've been redeemed from the law, and even though these punishments were prescribed for the Old Testament saints, our punishment was placed upon Jesus. So Amen. actually we won't suffer any of these punishments listed in Deuteronomy 28, 15 through 68, but you can look over there and part of the punishment was sickness, and it says every sickness and every disease, which is not even Amen. written in this book of the law, them will the Lord bring upon you until you're destroyed. That's now right. again, we aren't going to have that that happened to us because Jesus became a curse and redeemed us from the curse of the law. But it shows you that this blessing of Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 through 14 extends to every sickness, every disease. You don't have to have any of them. He'll take all sickness away from the midst of us. In verse 17, it says, If thou shalt say in thine heart, These nations are mightier than I, how can I dispossess them? You need to pay attention here because if you just casually read this, you might think this is talking about a person saying, these nations are mightier than I. How can I dispossess them? But what it's saying is, if you say these nations are mightier than mm -hmm. I, then God says, how can I dispossess them? God has to mm -hmm. flow through us. That's he right. does not do things without us. We can do nothing without Him but he will do nothing without us. He has to flow through people. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 says, Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think Amen. according to the power that works in yes. us. If there isn't any power of faith working on the inside of you, mm -hmm. God cannot move. That's it's true. not God who's letting people get sick. It's not God who's letting people die. Mm -hmm. It's people who are doing this because we are doubting in our heart and God says, I can't do it if you won't receive, if you won't cooperate with me and believe. And uh, he goes on and talks about that they should not be afraid of any of the nations that they're going to have to fight. We could apply this to our situation. We don't have to be afraid of any sickness, yeah. any disease. You know, it's amazing to me how some people think that it takes a lot of faith or a lot of power to overcome cancer or coronavirus or whatever it is that you're mm -hmm. dealing with. But a cold, that's, that's easy. Did you know that they can actually do more to heal you of cancer than they can a cold? There is no cure for the common cold. Which, did you know the common cold is a, a coronavirus? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, the reason they call this COVID-19 is because it's the 19th coronavirus that they've named. Uh, a cold is a virus. Flu is a virus. Yeah. And uh, But the reason people... Uh, mm -hmm. seem like it's harder to overcome cancer or something than it is a cold is because mm -hmm. a cold doesn't kill you and so there isn't the same fear attached mm -hmm. to it. But actually men can do more for cancer than they can do for a cold because they don't have a cure for a cold. They can deal with some of the symptoms. They can dry up your nose and they may be able to give you something that will numb you mm -hmm. to a headache or congestion, yeah. but they can't cure it. But with cancer, they can cut out a cancer they can irradiate part of it and things like this. Actually, there is more treatment for cancer than there is a cold, but most people don't have the same fear level associated with the cold because they know it's not going to kill them. Yeah. So anyway, my point That's is good. that whatever we are fighting, we, can't, we don't need to be afraid of it, whether it's a virus, whether it's cancer, whether it's you know. AIDS, whether it's anything. Nothing is impossible with God. Mm -hmm. I had a guy come to me one time and he, he listed probably a dozen things from the top of his head down to his mm -hmm. feet 
And he talked about the pain in his neck and problems down his spine, his hips, sciatica, neuropathy, and he just went from head to toe. And then he came back and he says, but you know the neck is what really bothers me. If you could just pray that God would heal my neck, I could live with the rest of it. And I just responded to him by saying, well, I understand that if we ask God to heal all of these things at one time, the lights in heaven might dim. I'm not sure God has enough power to do all of this at once. <laughs> and the guy, he, he realized I was being a little snarky with him. And he, he says, well, that was pretty dumb what I said. And I said, it was real dumb. <laughs> but really, we think somehow or another it takes more power to heal something. Did you know the same power, the same faith that heals a cold yeah. heals cancer? Amen. There is zero difference. It doesn't take more faith to heal cancer or to heal coronavirus. The only difference is that there is a different level of fear yeah. associated with cancer than there is a cold mm -hmm. or coronavirus. And it's your fear that stops it. And this is what he's saying. If you say in your yeah. heart, yeah. I can't do this. This is bigger than me, God. This is really hard. Then you are the one that stops the power of God. So he says, don't fear any of these nations. Don't make any covenant with them. And the way I interpret that is, is don't make peace with your sickness. Mm. You need to hate it. That's right. You know, I remember the testimony of Deborah McDermott. I don't know how many of you remember the two McDermott boys that were healed of autism. Mm. But I prayed for them and we were just talking about Timothy McDermott. He's yeah. one playing. Matter of fact, if you watch our thing on Sunday, he will be playing Jesus, yes. I think. And man, <laughs> to come from being housebound and autistic and unable to yeah. do anything to where you're praying, Jesus, that's quite a change. That's awesome. But anyway, his mother, as she was believing for their healing, uh, the doctors told her, you need to make peace with autism. And praise God, she had enough wisdom to say, I'll not make peace mm -hmm. with this. This is the enemy. This is what's destroying my children. And she hated them. And this is what this is saying. Don't make a covenant. Don't get to where, well, I can live with this. I can't walk as much as I used to. I can't do things that I used to, but I can live with this. You have just made a covenant with that sickness. You need to get to where you hate sickness. That's right. You will not put up with it. I am not going to live less than what God intended me to because after all, I'm getting older and I can still function and we've got these laws now for the handicapped and I can get by and no, that's a rotten attitude. You just made a covenant with the enemy when you do stuff like that. And anyway, it goes on. Let me just skip on down. In verse uh, 21, it says, Thou shalt not be affrighted at them for the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible. Again, when people are afraid, and I'm not saying this because I don't have compassion and I'm not saying it because I'm trying to be mean, but if you're afraid of coronavirus, it's because you have more of a relationship with fear than you do with God, with faith. When you know God, Nothing is impossible to be, nothing is impossible mm -hmm. to God. This is what he's telling them. And then look at this in verse 22. And the Lord thy God will put out these nations before thee by little and little. Thou mayest not consume them at once, lest the beast of the field increase upon thee. Man, now that is one awesome truth right there. There's a lot of people that they just hear me talking about believing God and seeing people raised from the dead or blind eyes open. And so, man, they just want to believe and receive everything all at once. But it comes little by little. Yeah. If you yeah. can't believe God for your headache, for your toothache, for your toenail, then when it comes to coronavirus or cancer or something else, you're going to be hard pressed. And this is just a principle that applies not only in going in and occupying the promised land, but it's in everything. There is a process mm -hmm. and you have to start believing. And one of the things that's happened with this virus is I think a lot of people are seeing that because they weren't in a crisis and because the doctors are able to handle the things you're dealing with, you haven't gotten serious about healing and about seeking God. Mm -hmm. And this sure. is exposed the fact that you haven't been exercising yourself in this area. So I would say that mm -hmm. if nothing else, this ought to be a wake up call for you and you need to start trusting God in everything. Yeah. 
You need to trust God and not put up with allergies and not put up with these little things that are an inconvenience but don't stop you. You need to start believing. And if you would believe God for the little, then He'll increase you to more. And you'll be just like this. It'll come little by little. And mm -hmm. you know where I am, where Carrie is at right now, we've been walking with the Lord a long time. This young lady, even though she's young, has been <laughs> in ministry for how many years? Twenty. 20 years. Yeah. She's got a lot of experience under her belt and she's seen a lot of things happen. And there, you just have to start. And there is, yep. uh, you know, it says in Romans chapter 5 that experience gives hope. Yep. And hope makes not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in your heart. And once you release your faith and see God heal you or do something miraculous, then you'll have that, you'll be that much stronger the next time and then the next time. And after a while, you get to where, yeah. man, this is no big deal. Coronavirus is nothing. You realize if God did this for me, then that's God right. can do this. And, and that's, that's exactly what he's saying. He says, remember what he did bringing you out of Egypt. If yep. he did all of these mighty plagues, why are you afraid of these other things? Yeah. That's, really why, that's why he kept telling them to put, put him in remembrance, you know, take this stone and put it into the ark and carry it just to, to remember what God had done. And I was talking to some, one of the students today and I just said, you start where you are and, you, and your relationship with God, it starts to develop this hope and this faith and you start to see fruit. And so then the next time the battle comes, you're like, oh, that's nothing because God did it for me here. Have you shared the testimony about Mikey getting healed? from hitting his head? Oh, yeah. We were, it was about I two. I think we mentioned it. Yeah, two and a half weeks ago. But see, this is an example that, man, this could have been really, really serious yeah, and my, yet you were just strong. Yeah, my son had uh, was on a swing and, you know, a porch swing and five of them were on it and it fell backwards and he, and he slammed his head against a rock. And again, we didn't really, really know what had happened. And, you know, the babysitter brought him home and, you know, he, just, he was crying, but he fell, fell asleep, was fine, woke up, was making banana bread and then said his ear was hurting weird. And she called me and I, I felt like, and I just had peace and I felt like, okay, we'll just get it checked out. But I had peace and they took him in and they did a CAT scan and his brain was cracked and his ear was filling up with blood and behind it and he had a, 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 a brain breed brain bleed. And so they'd had us go down and we just had such peace and we're like, it's fine. He's good. They were going uh, yeah, to take him to Children's they were, Hospital. Yeah, they took him to Children's Hospital. They were talking about brain surgery and it was just like, Mike and I had just prayed over him. We had such peace. And, and that's the thing. You can get all these doctor's reports and get everybody's perspectives, but you have peace that rules and reigns. It says that peace will guard your heart Amen. and mind in Christ Jesus. So it, it actually becomes, like you said, that force field, that shield, because you know, like I know God, I know he loves my son. I know everything's going to be fine. We've prayed over him. He's healed. And it was just like, that was a period for us. It wasn't this comma or dot, dot, dot. I wonder, well, we'll see what happens when the doctor comes in. We'd already made up our mind that it was, this is what the word of God says and we agree on it. And, it and just in brought just peace. a matter of hours, the whole thing was yeah. taken care of. Yeah. And he, he was just fine. He was getting to have popsicles for breakfast and, and, you know, watching a show and he was like, are you ready to go home? And I'm like, yeah, let's go home. So <laughs> we got an $18,000 bill, but you know, even then God can provide really? for that. Really? $18,000? $18,000 bill. And so, so if anybody wants to send in an <laughs> offering for Carrie, she could probably, I didn't know that you had an $18,000 bill. Yeah, it came in today. Bill. So even then it's like, but God provided when my daughter went to the ICU and we had over $24,000 and God supernaturally provided. So an $18,000 thousand dollar bill, even though you may go, what? You're like, you know what? God's provided before. So he's going to provide again. So whether it's healing or finances, you just get this, you get a relationship with God that you know, he's faithful. You know, his word is faithful. And that's where you put your trust. And so that's like this verse here that he does it little by little, because if he was like, if he would have given me everything that I'm experiencing right now, I wouldn't have had the maturity, the ability to handle it. We have to have over $5 million a month just, you know, and we're still paying all of our employees during this time yeah. that they aren't working here. I couldn't have done that 10 years ago or 20 years ago. Yeah. So he increases you little by little by little, and it'll be the same for you. Amen. It's really good. Got oh, any questions? We have some really good questions tonight. So um, we're going to try to get through as many of them as possible. So um, we have this... Uh, question here. There's a uh, VM uh, M on YouTube says this doctors want me to do an additional year of chemotherapy. And I'm assuming it's my unbelief that's blocking my supernatural healing, but I don't believe in conventional treatments. What do I do? I can't tell you what to do because it's your situation, not mm -hmm. mine. I can tell you what I would do, but if your faith isn't in the same place that mine is, 
um, it might not work. Mm -hmm. Let me use the testimony of John Tesh. John Tesh had uh, stage four cancer and he was told to put his house in order. He was going to die. And that's when he came across my teaching. He began to get hold of it. He believed God. But he did go through all of the surgery. It was prostate cancer. He went through all the surgery. He went through all the chemotherapy. And he did all of these things. And they said that they got it. But then in a couple of years, it showed up again. And this time he went in and they saw it and they started uh, diagnosing it. And finally, they... This was his own words. They wanted to do carpet bombing, yeah. which would have made him sterile. It would have affected his kidneys. It would have, it would have had major implications. And his faith had grown to such a place that that second time he looked at Connie, his wife, and he, they just both knew that they didn't have to do that, that Jesus had healed them. Yeah. And so he didn't take any treatments and mm -hmm. he's completely healed. Just yeah. wrote a book about it. Yeah, and good. had him on. So my point is that, see, the first time, if he would have tried to operate in just the faith that I was operating in after I have mm -hmm. done little by little and I've grown, yeah. uh, he might have died. But the second time, uh, he was strong enough. And so it's going to be the same with you. I can tell you that God wants you healed. I can say that God has provided healing, but it's going to be according to your faith. And it, it says right here, if you doubt and say, you know, these nations are mightier than I. If you doubt and say this cancer, I'm going to die. And if you've got fear about that, then God can't set you free. That, yeah. that fear will negate your faith. So you That's just right. have to pray. And this is what the Holy Spirit's for. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit will give you peace. And it says, let the peace of God rule in your heart, Colossians 3.15. And so just pray. And if you have peace, and say, I know that I'm healed and I don't have to have this. Well, then go with that and praise God. You'll save a lot of money and a lot of damage and, Amen. and it'll be a greater testimony. But if you aren't at that place, there is certainly nothing wrong with you going ahead and having the surgery. Yeah. So I can't tell you. You have to let the Holy Spirit show you on that one. Amen. So uh, Melissa Lee on chat says this, can you give an example of how to pray for someone when you don't know if they're born again or not, but they're in the hospital and not doing well? She says, currently I have a relative in the hospital and they are not able to have visitors or not able to talk on the phone. So how should she be praying for them if she doesn't know if they're saved or not? You know, that's a hard one because uh, there's a lot of people that go in and pray and just believe that it's their faith that's going to get the other person healed. And it may just be because of the anointing that's on my life, but that's not the way I do things. I go in and always minister to the individual and getting, get them to believe. Mm -hmm. Now, they, if, they're, if it's new to them, they may not be strong in faith, but they, yeah. if they just have a little bit of faith, then I can believe for them and see it come to pass. But if, I, if a person is totally resistant mm. towards me, I've never had success uh, you know, it says in Mark chapter 6 that Jesus could do no mighty work because of their unbelief, not because of His. And Jesus operated in faith perfectly, and yet when people rejected Him, He couldn't do many mighty works because of their unbelief. So I would always try and get the person that's needing the miracle to believe and send them CDs, uh, have them, you know, connect through the internet, have somebody go in and talk to them or something. But if you don't have access to that, then you just have to pray and ask God for grace and mercy. Maybe if you could call them and talk to them. Another thing you can do is Matthew 9, 38 mm -hmm. says, pray the Lord of the harvest that he will send forth laborers into the harvest. Yeah. So if you had no access to them at all, I would at least pray that prayer and say, God, send some That's nurse send some doctor, send somebody across their path that's yeah. going to speak encouragement to them because they have to get in faith in order to receive. That's good. You got something better than that? <laughs> so JJ asked this. He says, what do you do when other believers, family, don't believe the word about health and they want to argue their point using the word? I don't agree with them and don't want to argue. Well, I've been in that situation with my family and you have mm -hmm. to let them go. You know, here's one of the ways that I've dealt with that is I have, I have uh, hundreds of people at a meeting come up to me and ask for prayer. And I, let's just say that if I had a hundred people that came and wanted me to pray with them personally, out of those, I would say that there's probably 20 or less 
that are strong in faith and the others are desperate. Some of them are even drugged mm -hmm. there by somebody else. Mm -hmm. And I don't take responsibility for that because I know that not everybody's believing. And so I just agree with the ones that I can agree with and I'll pray a prayer of faith for the other ones, but they can negate it and I let it go. And something that's helped me when my own family didn't receive from me, I had to treat it just like these people in a prayer line. Yeah. But somehow or another, we, th we think that, no, it's my family. Mm. I've got to believe. And, and you take it as a personal failure yeah. if they don't receive. Mm -hmm. Jesus' own brothers didn't believe in him. It says in uh, John chapter 7, neither did they believe in him. And yeah. they rejected him. And I guarantee you, Jesus was perfect. There wa it wasn't his fault. So what I would say to you is you just pray for him. You do what you can do. I wouldn't argue with them because that's not the way to do it, but you just live it in front of them and don't take That's responsibility good. for their personal response to the Lord. That's good. So, uh, a Yeon, I believe that's how you pronounce it, on Facebook said this, as Christians, can't we agree and command the coronavirus to die and stop spreading? I can certainly do that for me or for somebody that's in agreement with me, mm -hmm. but over everybody, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. That's like you sitting there saying, can't you just agree that all lions and tigers no longer be meat eaters, make them herbivores because that's the way that God created them to be? Well, that is true that God created them to be that way, but we are the ones that corrupted the whole thing when we ate yeah. of the wrong tree mm -hmm. and we started death in the earth. If you take that same logic, you could rebuke death over everybody and make everybody live and nobody have to die when the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Yeah. I just don't think you can extend your faith over the whole world and make the coronavirus mm -hmm. die. I think you can definitely do it for you and for yours, anybody who's in agreement. But no, our authority ends at the end of our nose. Yeah. And if a whole bunch of Christians would keep doing that with every family oh, yeah. member and keep being light and salt, and then you'd see differences. But just one person. If, if we had a revival and if every person in the body of Christ was turned on and operating in the healing power of God, we'd stop coronavirus in its tracks. Yeah. But I don't know that I can do it individually. Mm -hmm. uh, we'd have to do it as a body. Yeah, as a body. That's good. Um, so Nap on chat says this, how can we be positive, be a positive influence to those who want to focus on the news updates and talk about constantly what they see and hear? So how can they be a positive influence? impact or influencer? Well, I, you know, again, that's a, kind of a finesse question. Uh, it takes maturity to be able to counter negativism without you being negative and mm -hmm. critical of them. So you just have to let the Holy Spirit show you. I've used this example before, but I was playing basketball with a group of guys one time and they were just using profanity every other breath every time they missed a shot. And I wanted to do something and say something, but rather than just come out and say, you guys are going to hell, <laughs> you know, quote scripture about, you know, that if you take the name of the Lord in vain, he'll not hold you guiltless. So instead of doing that, what I did, I just started every time I missed a shot, I'd go, hallelujah. <laughs> and they just looked at me. And then the next time, hallelujah, praise God. And they said, what are you doing? And I said, you praise your God, I'll praise my God. And I didn't do it in a condemning way, and they thought it was funny. And so from then on, they all started going, hallelujah, when they missed a <laughs> shot. And we had a great time, and I got to share with them about the Lord in a positive way. So That's awesome. God will just give you creative ideas. Yeah. Amen. So uh, WLN 2006 says this, how can you go from believing things like healing are possible to knowing it will happen and seeing results? Well, it takes time. Similar to that verse I was reading down to Deuteronomy 7, it's by little and little. Mm -hmm. you, you, have to, you have to convince yourself. You know the truth and the truth will set you free. John chapter 8, verse 32. But it's only the truth you know that sets you free. So you've got to get into the mm -hmm. Word of God. You've got to yeah, find good. the truth. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. But then as you act on the Word, it will increase. As you give out, as you walk something out, it will grow and increase and your experiences of victory will make you stronger and stuff. Yeah. So it's, it's a process. Yeah, I good. tell you, one of the things that works is, uh, Carrie can bear witness to this because she not only is over our school here, but she and her husband were in uh, 
Russia. And man, you see people come in, just like we were saying at the start of this uh, Bible study tonight, we don't have a single director around 16 offices around the world or any staff that have gotten sick with the coronavirus. And it's mm -hmm. not because we've been praying for them and my faith has extended mm -hmm. over all 600 and something of these people. Mm -hmm. It's because they learn the word and they have believed the word and the word's working for Amen. them. So yeah. that's the way you do it. You've got to get into the word and just yeah. start building yourself. And you've got to stand against, like Mark chapter four says, of the cares of this life and other things that choke the word. Some people in a crisis situation will get focused on God and receive a miracle. And then when the pressure's gone, they go back to being carnal. And that's, you aren't going to be a successful Christian doing that. Yeah. Amen. One last question. We got 11 seconds. All right. But so we'll we, ha we have one last question here. It's kind of, it's a big one. Uh, so Kate Brizzle, she asked this question. She says, what do you say to someone who is believing their loved one would see healing and they died anyway? I have a friend in this situation asking me why her husband wasn't healed when he kept standing in faith. Well, again, you don't know for sure what they were believing in their heart. Mm -hmm. um, I, I've had situations like this happen. I had a girl that I was unofficially engaged to and we were believing God for her to be healed and I was with her when she died. And with her last breath, she said, I, it's got to be now. She was believing God for healing. She was praising God. Yeah. But, you know, three years, well, let me say it this way. Her family and every person that was involved in this basically quit believing in healing because they said if anybody ever believed God and stood strong, it was Debbie. Mm -hmm. So they all said it must not be God's will. I said, look, I know it was God's will. God did not kill Debbie. And they mm -hmm. turned on me and said, so are you saying that God isn't sovereign? I said, I don't know what I'm saying, but I'm telling you that God didn't kill her. Well, then were we wrong? I don't know. Mm -hmm. It took me three and a half years and I found out that we violated nearly every principle of faith and it was out of ignorance. None mm -hmm. of it was malicious, but it was our fault. And I know that that's hard for people to receive, but it says in 1 Peter chapter 5, it says God gives grace to the humble. If you won't humble yourself and say, God, if something's wrong, it's not you. It's mm -hmm. got to be on my part. If you won't humble yourself and if you're going to maintain your integrity and say, no, I, I know I was believing God with no problems, then you'll have to say that God was wrong. Mm -hmm. And that's arrogance. I'm not ever going to say that. Yeah. And last story, and we'll quit with this, but I had a man that I went over and he was brought home in an ambulance. He couldn't even hold a phone up to his ear. And Don Crow, a friend of mine, we went over every day for over a month and prayed for him. And he got to where he was up, walking, eating, driving, and it looked like he was going to make it. And then boom, he just died. And everybody, it was the same question. He was believing God and they even saw results of it in his life. But at his memorial service, his wife brought out his diary. And about 10 days before he died, he wrote in his diary, he says, I know God is healing me but I'm 76 or whatever it was. I'm ready to go. It's too much of a fight. I quit. But I know that he said it, he knew his wife wouldn't understand. Nobody would understand. So he's going to keep saying the right things, but in his heart, he just was ready mm. to go. Wow. And they read that at the funeral. And so that answered our questions. And you don't always know what's going on. This guy was still professing the right things. Yeah. But um, it wasn't God who fails to heal. Yeah. He's all, you know, it says by his stripes, we were healed. First Peter 2, 24. If you were healed, how can he not do what he's already done? Yeah. He's already done his part. Mm -hmm. If a person doesn't receive, it's never God that didn't give. It's us that didn't receive. And sometimes it's obvious. Sometimes it's not, yeah. but it's never God's fault. Amen. That's good. Because the enemy will try to use those things to then cause doubt and then he'll just try yeah. to say, well, you can't, God's not good, so he can't help any other situation. So the enemy would love to try to get in there. And so what you said about humility is so powerful. And so people sit here and in a sense say that God's wrong instead of saying that they are wrong. Man, mm -hmm. I just would never do that. Yeah. A person who says I'm mad at God because he didn't do this. I'm saying this in love. But you are a person who has exalted your own goodness, mm -hmm. your own wisdom yeah. as being greater than God's. I would never do that. If something doesn't work for me, and I've got some things in my life 
right now that aren't the way that I know God wants them to be. Mm -hmm. But man, I'm not sitting here saying, God, why did you do this? If anybody's missed it, it's me. Mm -hmm. It's not God. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. And so you just had to start with that, that he's always faithful because he promised he would be. And if you don't see it, it's not God that missed it. It's you that missed it. Or sometimes other people are involved in your miracle. Yeah. Jesus had to put out all of the unbelievers that were mocking him in order to see the power of God manifest. And sometimes people won't make that strong of a stance. Mm -hmm. So there's, I could probably share a lot of things. Matter of fact, I've got 200,000 hours <laughs> of free it's material true. on my website. <laughs> and man, go in, just absorb it. And I guarantee you, it'll answer your questions. Amen. I believe it'll be good. Anything that you're finding there on healing, this is huge right now. Uh, and, and then the stuff on blessings and miracles, I'm going to encourage you to find that. It just, it, it made such a difference because I started to realize, wow, you know, I'm full of healing and I am the healed of the Lord. And when sickness tries to come, I can rebuke it versus I'm this empty vessel, mm -hmm. totally always susceptible to sickness. And then once I get it, because I will, and if that's the mentality, then I got to cast it out and believe God. I Man, it's a completely different mentality. One of them is starting from defeat trying to get to victory. Yeah. The other one is coming from victory. I'm already victorious and Satan, you are illegal. I am not the sick trying to get well. I'm the well and you are trying to take my sickness. It's like when you see it, my kids are trying to play King on the Mountain, which I'm saying no right now because I don't want Michael to crack his head again anywhere. <laughs> uh, but that's the whole thing. If you get on top of the mountain and then you push things down because no, I know I have the victory, so I'm pushing it away mm -hmm. versus I'm trying to climb this mountain of healing and maybe God will want it or maybe he'll shove me down. No, you, you're already, you already have the victory. This has been good. You know, we could talk about this for oh, hours. Amen. <laughs> Matter of fact, I happen to have 200,000 <laughs> hours of teaching, free teaching on our website. Go check it out, awmi.net. But every Tuesday night we have this Bible study. Yeah. And remember that on this coming Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, we're going to yep. have some special yeah. presentations from our creative arts department. I hadn't yeah. seen it yet, but it's, it's going to be, be powerful. awesome. And then you'll be teaching at the same time. So it'll be a live stream where Andrew will be teaching and then we'll have these videos. Well, it's going to be super powerful. Three o'clock on Sunday, Mountain Standard Time. So join us then and also join us next Tuesday night for our Tuesday night live Bible study. Amen. God bless you. I hope you enjoyed tonight's Bible study. I get great comments from this and I just love teaching this, but I want to let you know that it does cost money. It's around $2,000 per Bible study that we uh, have cost for airing this over the internet and the different platforms that we do. And so I'd like to ask you to be a part of this. We have people all over the world that tune in, around 20 countries per week tune into this. Thousands of people watch it. And uh, we would just appreciate it if you would help us with the cost of this. I think it's blessing people, but it does cost money. So pray about it. And if the Lord speaks to you, join with us and help support our Tuesday night live Bible study. Join us next Tuesday for our live Bible study. To receive notes and to win giveaways, visit our website.